2837. Draws this uh, slightly complicated looking circuit, 10 volts, comes down to sort of a diamond shaped kind of a thing like this. More diamond here. There, and right across the middle of it is a capacitor. So these uh, resistances resistances are one, eight, uh, four, and two, and the capacitor is one microfarad. Like that. Okay. So the question is, uh, if this is allowed to go for a long time. Um, what is the voltage across the capacitor? What is the voltage across the capacitor? So, standard answer, if it's allowed to go for a long time, the capacitor becomes fully charged by current flow. So current will flow like this, charge with the capacitor fully, where no current flows through the capacitor. But we can see in this, in this circuit, there's plenty of current paths that ignore the capacitor. Basically, the current can go around these two paths and go all the way through. So really, we uh, can just ignore the capacitor, pretend it's not there, and just figure out everything from the resistors. But the question they're asking is the voltage drop across the capacitor. So we need to know the voltage here and the voltage here. So I'll call them VA and VB. Since the current is seeing different resistors, these may not necessarily be at the same voltage, even though they look like they're in sort of the same place. So if we need the voltage across the capacitor, we just need to figure out the potential at A and the potential at B when there's no current flowing through here. If there's no current through here, this looks like actually a much simpler circuit. It's just uh, a parallel combination of resistors where each branch has these two resistors. One branch has a 1 and a 4, and one branch has an 8 and a 2. And we actually don't even have to do any detailed uh, calculation of the uh, total current to get the answer because our 10 volts is going to drop here. So we're going to have 10 volts going across a 1 and a 4, and we're going to have 10 volts going across an 8 and a 2 ohm resistor. So you can work out uh, the uh, math if you want, but if you have basically 10 volts going across a 1 ohm and then a 4 ohm, it's going to go from 10 volts, and this is 1, and this is 4, it's going to drop 2 volts here to get to 8, and then it's going to drop 8 volts there to get to 0. That's how the voltage would drop across a, uh, a combination of a 1 and a 4 ohm resistor. And if you want to, you can just say, well, it's 10 volts divided by, uh, by uh, a total of 5 ohms, so it's 2 amps. So the 2 amps will drop 2 volts across this one, and 2 amps times 4 ohms will drop 8 volts across that one. That's really all you're saying. So here, then, the drop is, uh, it goes from 10 volts down to, to 8 volts, and then down to 0 volts. The other side is essentially the same thing. Uh, you go from 10 and then you drop here. This actually must drop it to um, 2 volts. And then down to 0 volts. So again, it's just the case of being at 10, going through an 8 ohm resistor, going through a 2 ohm resistor to get to 0. This time it's 1 amp. Um, Right now, let's see, this time it's uh, 10 volts, uh, 10 ohms, yeah, so it's 1 amp is flowing, and 1 amp across 8 uh, ohms would drop you 8 volts, which is why we're down to 2 volts here, dropping another 2 volts to 0. So that part of the circuit's actually uh, not too complicated, so the voltage difference across the capacitor is between 8 and 2, so you have 6 volts across the capacitor. So delta V across the capacitor, is 6 volts. Um, the question for part B is what is the charge on the capacitor uh, if we tip the battery is taken out? What is the charge? I think it's uh, how much later? But how long does it take the charge to get down to 10% of its original charge if the battery goes away? So if, when it says the battery being taken out of the circuit, that's essentially the same as the switch being opened, if there were a switch. It's just saying the battery stops and now the circuit, the, the capacitor is going to discharge through all the resistors. 
And the question is, what will happen when it gets down? How long will it take to get down to a tenth of its original charge? So since this is one of these relative questions, how long does it take to get to a tenth of its original charge? We don't have to actually calculate the original charge. I mean, we could, because we know it's got six volts, and we know it's one microfarad capacitor. We actually don't really need to. What we really need to know is the RC time constant. So once this battery goes away, uh, this wire is just doing nothing, and this wire is doing nothing. We really just have a capacitor and four resistors connected to it somehow. And if we just sort of think about how they're connected, really it's just then a capacitor like that, and it's got two resistors on one side and two resistors on the other side. So one, eight, four, and two. One, eight, four, and two. Um, or, you know, this is all at the same potential. You could also draw like this. It might look a little bit better to you. Four and two, and these are down here. Um, one and eight. So this is all at the same potentials. So these could easily be slid all the way down to the other side of the four and two. So the point is, you have a C here, uh, and you have all these resistors in a network, and you just have to figure out the uh, the equivalent resistance of that little network. So if it looks like this, then four plus two is. Uh, is that right? uh, yeah, 4 plus 2 is 6, and 1 plus 8 is 9. So we have a, a, a 9 ohm and a 6 ohm in parallel. So let's see. Uh, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 9. So R, the equivalent resistance is uh, uh, 18. If that's going to be, that's 2 plus 3 is 5 over 18. 1 over this is 5 over 18, so it's 18 over 5 is the equivalent um, resistance of this thing. Okay. So now we have R and we have C. So we have our RC time constant. Is uh, We put those together. Our RC time constant is 3.6 microseconds. Let's see if that makes sense. Tau is RC. And R was uh, uh, 5, 10, 15, 3.6 ohms times the capacitance, which was 10 to the minus 6 farads. So sure enough, that's 3.6 times 10 to the minus 6. 3.6 microseconds is our time constant. Okay. So part B asks how long it takes uh, for it to get from its initial full charge um, down to 10% of its initial full charge. We don't actually need to know the initial charge because we can say Q of the discharge equation, Q naught e to the minus t over tau. We calculated tau, the time constant down here, 3.6 microseconds. And we could calculate Q naught actually pretty easily because we know it's 6 volts and we know it's 1 microfarad, but we, but we actually don't need to because we just want to know the time of when the charge, Q is a function of time, is down to 10% of Q naught. That means Q of t over Q naught is 0 0.1. So when does that happen? Well, that happens when e to the minus t over tau equals 0 0.1. So there you're solving for this t. So now this is telling you when, when it happens. So we take uh, the log of both sides of this, and the log of uh, 0 0.1 is minus 2.3. Right? So the natural log of 0 0.1 equals the natural log of e to the minus t over 3.6 microseconds. So that's minus 2.3, and that is a log of e is the thing, so minus t over 3.6 microseconds. So the minuses go away, and the time that it takes is then 2.3 times 3.6 microseconds, which is 8.3 microseconds. So time answer is 8.6 or 3, 8.3 microseconds. So that's how long it takes to get down to 10% full charge.